Angel fans, Perry is starting his fourth year as the general manager of the Angels, and the record isn't so great. The draft, yeah, it's been better, but what do we make of his three years and now moving into his fourth year? Like, what do we think about that? Should Perry be able to stay, or should this be Perry's last season? Does he deserve an extension, or has he has, has he just stunk it up and needs to be sent away. Let, let's talk about it, friends. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ever notice when I ask questions, my voice gets really, really high. You ever notice that? Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. There's a couple of new reviews there, Johnny, if you haven't seen them. And they're five stars, and we appreciate that. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, Come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's show is brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. You can empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics to treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com and use our promo code locked on, and you'll get $20 off your order. That's jacemedical.com, J A S E medical.com. Thanks for being here for this episode <laughs> of Locked On. <laughs> Just doing my mic impression. Hey, we appreciate great. you being here for Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Rose. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. I need another brother to help me out in this show. <laughs> I can't stand you anymore. Hey, my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. <laughs> hey, we're going into our third season here at Locked On Angels, and we've appreciated and I, having and you And my guys. last. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we've appreciated having you along for the ride uh, since we uh, hopped on the show back in April of 2022. Wow. And now it's 2024. Mike and we're entering our third season uh just so everybody is aware we're back to Monday Wednesday Friday episodes right up until before spring training where we'll go back to five days a week then the second note is that we've been nominated Michael yep. Lockdown Angels has been nominated for best baseball podcast if you guys could whether you're watching or listening head into the episode description and you'll find the link on where you can vote for us for best baseball podcast we're really excited about it we hope you are too Something that we're really pumped about. Hey, on today's show, is this GMPM's last season? Well, he doesn't have an extension yet, and nope. it's the last year of his contract. And so we're asking the question, should he stay? Should he go? Like the Clash? Well, we're going to talk about it, Mike. Let's get into it right now. <laughs> yeah, so the Halos have had eight consecutive losing seasons. I don't need to remind anybody about that, especially Locked On Everydayers. They they feel the pain of that, uh, yes. including the first three seasons of GNPM stint as general manager. Now, Perry has been clear that the Angels are not going to rebuild this year, although mm -hmm. in his press conferences and in his most recent one, when he talked to some of the angel media he still hasn't given any indication as to what they are to do and i know mm -hmm. that jeff fletcher and sam blum have both said that's kind of a, a mode that gms get in and teams mm -hmm. do that but angel fans are just sick of it i think i think we're sick of it because it'd be great to get some clarity right it'd be great to get some some direction from him but truth is is that we're not going to rebuild that's been the narrative ever since art already has, has taken over ownership but the approach really hasn't worked for the Angels. They've had five non-interim GMs running the Angels since Moreno bought the team in 2003. Hmm. And as Manassian enters his last year on his contract, the, the question really is, what, what will open up Manassian's opportunity for another season? Like, what will give him an extension or what will cause him to be fired? Now, before we answer those questions, John, I think it's important for us to look at what Perry has done well in this first segment mm -hmm. and then look at what Perry hasn't done well and then perhaps give our thoughts at the end of the show. So why don't you start us and and, and talk through the first thing that we're convinced Perry, Perry has done well in comparison to previous GMs like DePoto and Epler. Yeah, in terms of the draft, I know that Perry has drafted out of a need for positional depth right away. And so you see them taking a lot of college arms, a lot of 
college infielders and outfielders, a lot of position players, guys who can really make an impact in the MLB right away. Sorry, I shouldn't say the MLB. Impact in MLB <laughs> right away. Mike, we've seen that with Zach Neto. I still think that they fell uh, backwards. I'll use yep. appropriate language there. <laughs> uh, they fell backwards into Zach Neto being MLB yeah. ready last year because right. they did not have a plan for shortstop other than running out like Gio or Shella or giving Renhifo a shot there. They didn't address shortstop and they really are fortunate that Zach Neto was ready to step up and play there. Nolan Shawnwell, of course, is somebody that we're excited about. Had a great 29 games and a 29 on base game on base streak last season. Still a bit of a question mark. You see guys like Ben Joyce and Sam Bachman and Chase Silseth, who, you know, Silseth was taken in that all pitching draft, as yeah. was Bachman. Yeah. And so they've all had an immediate impact. And that's more than we've seen from guys that Billy Epler drafted or Jerry DePoto drafted in terms of coming up and making an impact. Now, that isn't to say that there aren't guys that they drafted that we're excited about. Obviously, Detmers was a Epler guy, yep. a Joe Adele, and that sort of thing. But Joe Adele's taken years to, you know, get to a point where we're actually excited for him to have a role on this team in 2024. Right. And all indications seem like, yes, he will have a role on this team. But in, in three years, three players that GMPM has drafted are now starting with the Halos. And again, that comes out of the urgency to fill some needs. But at the end of the day, they've actually been impactful and they're actually good draft picks, right? Yeah, yeah. So do, you don't think that they kind of fell in into this, like got lucky with these draft picks? Do you think that there was some thought and some intentionality with picking guys like Neto, Sean Owell, and others? Well, they certainly don't seem to pick the ones that everybody projects them to pick when they enter the draft. You know, you have your draft predictions right up until the actual draft happens. And I don't think anybody predicted the angels to take the guys that they've taken, especially their number one picks yeah. in Sean, Owell and Neto and Bachman. Right. So all of that to say, I mean, yes, they, they picked out of an urgency to help the major league team, but they were also very good picks that I think these guys are going to stick around and, and have good, good careers. Yeah. Second thing that I think that we would both agree on that Perry has done well is he's made impactful trades. And the, I think the yeah. most important trade that he's made is the Brandon Marsh for Logan Ohapi trade. Definitely. That was a a win-win for both teams because the Phillies really benefited from Brandon Marsh and the Angels have really benefited so far from Logan Ohapi. And I think that this is slowly going to become a Logan Ohapi, Zach Neto Angels team, right? Mm -hmm. I know Mike Trout is still around, but I think that Logan Ohapi is going to be somebody that is going to take a serious leadership role this season along with Zach Neto, right? Yeah, you could tell that he's ready to be, you know, the guy behind the dish, making sure that, you know, what's happening in the infield and the outfield. I mean, he's he's priority number one behind the dish right there. And so right. he's got to be, he's got to captain that field that, uh, right. from behind the plate. Mike, in addition to that trade, now this is one thing that's frustrating about this offseason because Perry was very active and made some great trades last season, including yeah. trading Jansen Junk, Elvis Piguero, Adam Seminaris. They got Hunter Renfro. They got Gio Urshela. They were depth moves that the guys needed. And you couldn't, you know, you couldn't predict what would happen with Gio Urshela. Right. Getting half hurt halfway through the season. Hunter Renfro uh, just not being very clutch for three right. quarters of the season. When he had, he, five, he had four straight years of 25 plus home runs. You're thinking you're going to get somebody with power, even right. though his numbers kind of dipped. You're still going to get a lot of power, but the guy just couldn't come through when it was when it was needed for the Angels. So I, I just think that having those guys come in last offseason through a trade that of some guys that we weren't like too sad to let go, I think right. was pretty great. He traded Connor Van Skoyek for Mike Misakis earlier this season. And he had a great run with the Halos as well, especially filling in over at third and first and really mentoring the young guys on this team. That's why a lot of people would like to see him come back and be a bench bench piece. Yeah. And then I know that this was controversial at the time, but trading Rysel Iglesias right after signing him to that contract, it freed up money to go and get really two relievers in the form of Matt Moore and Carlos Estevez. And especially after the 2022 that Rysel had, Things were looking a little dicey, like you, you're paying a very expensive reliever to not be who you thought he was 
Um, obviously, the Braves really have made him into something, and and Rysel has kept performing on that level. So again, between the drafting and doing some of the trades that he's made, especially for Ohapi, helping add some depth last season, Perry's been good in those departments, especially yeah. with the fact that these guys who they've drafted have come up and and really already made an impact with the team. We kind of had a quiet rebuild right in front of us, right, Mike? When you consider the fact that Ohapi's here and he's somebody here for the long term, uh, you, you think about uh, the draft picks that he's made who are already here to help us, kind of a quiet rebuild right in front of our eyes without having to trade away you know, your trouts and stuff like that. Yeah, this is not to excuse the fact that he hasn't made any significant moves. No, this of course season. not. But I would say that he has slowly brought in younger, controllable players and has made some good trades to get those younger, controllable players. I know that the waiver wire mess, and we'll talk about that next segment, but the waiver wire mess, we lost some good players. But to be able to look at the list of people that he's drafted that have had immediate impact and then be able to make trades for guys like a Logan Ohapi has allowed this team to be flexible, to be younger, to not be expensive. And if those guys stay healthy, I think that this team, as we've mentioned before, I think that this team at least gets to 80, 81 wins next season, because mm -hmm. even the pitching staff they're they're attractive, even though they haven't performed, they're attractive because they've really compiled a young staff of controllable arms that are still arbitration eligible and aren't up for free agency for a few years. Detmer, Sandoval, Canning, all of those guys, even Silseth, who's already starting to look like a really strong piece for the Angels. So there has been this slow rebuild, which, again, no excuses for not doing anything so far this offseason. Sure. But there might be, and that might be another reason why I think Perry should stay, is, is he's given – somewhat of a plan to this team on how they can move forward and, and, and go ahead. I was just going to say, and he's done it all within the, uh, the box that yes. Artie Marino creates for he's, all of his G he's done it inside right? of the, the, the death star, right? He's, he's worked inside <laughs> of the death star that has been created for him. And he's brought in a, a, a team of players that if, if they perform, I think this could be a really fun team to watch. Think, think like it might be a bad example, but maybe like think, the Royals in 2014, like mm. that type of team that's young and exciting, no expectations, but suddenly they were able to put some things together and made a really yeah. great run. It could be, it could be potentially that type of team with, with the halos this season. Absolutely. Hey, coming up on locked on angels, we're going to get into the reasons why it might be time to move on from Perry Manassian. And then Mike and I are going to share our personal thoughts and what we think should happen. We'll get into all of that coming right up. John, I got a, I got a stupid text from a stupid Rams fan. Okay, I know I know we're in LA area, but uh, Rams fan because I'm a Niner fan. You're a Niner fan, and they yeah. said, "Hey, what happened to your Niners?" And I'm like, "They didn't start their quarterback. Yeah, they didn't that, start their running back. 20, 21 to twenty is the most embarrassing win of the Rams <laughs> yeah. season yeah. against Sam Darnold. And when you're sitting, I can't even just continue. Right, right. <laughs> I was really frustrated watching that game, but I wasn't frustrated because I know that locked on every dayers, if they bet on that game. They could put $5 down with FanDuel that's sponsoring the show today, and they could win 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed with that $5 bet. With a $5 bet, 150 bucks, win or lose. So you could have put money down on the Niners because we've been telling you to do that. And then they played all their backups this weekend and they lost. You want to still what won. What happened to your what happened to your <laughs> Florida? Get out of here. I know. I know. It, shows, it shows how much you're paying attention. Right, right. <laughs> But you would have won if you put down $5. Win or lose, you would have won 150 bucks, which is great with FanDuel. This app is super easy to use. So many different ways to bet, like same-game parlays. Uh, you can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. If you don't know what a parlay is, they explain it on FanDuel and on their website and on their app. It's one of the best apps. They're, they're America's favorite place to make bets. And they're also the official betting partner of the NFL. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on, make your first bet $5 and you can win 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. Again, FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. It's a locked on podcast network where it's your team every day. And we want to thank you for making locked on angels. Your first listen today. Hey, locked on every day. Don't forget that if you want to have Ultimate access 24-7 to all the top stories in sports, 
Locked On Sports Today is the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, and it's happening on YouTube. Just head on over to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, and you'll get all the top stories from the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows as well. So head on over there, Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, Hit subscribe and be part of the first ever 24-7 national sports streaming channel. Now, before you comment and say, well, I don't think Perry should stay. I think Perry should go. That's what segment two is about. We're going to yes. talk about why Perry should go. And there's a few reasons for that. So, Johnny, let me start with the first reason. This team hasn't been close to competing mm -hmm. in the three years that Perry has been the general manager. Mm -hmm. Despite the trades, despite going all in despite getting really lucky with some of the, the draft picks and having them play immediately, just feels like they have failed at every turn. Mm. And they had Mike Trout, and they had Shohei Otani, and they had, for a few games, Anthony Rendon, right? Like, they've had these opportunities, but they just haven't been able to make it happen. They mm -hmm. haven't been able to make it work. They haven't been able to surround this team with healthy players, successful players that really fill in the gaps. I know that they tried to do that last year, but even in last year's moves before the season and mid season, there were still decisions that were made that were like, guys, really, we're going to rely mm. on Hunter Renfro and Gio or And we're not going to make better moves than that with the, with the players that are out there. And we mm. have the financial flexibility. Really? We're going to do this. So I think the first reason why Perry shouldn't stay I think everybody would agree with this is that this team just hasn't been competitive yeah. in the three years that he has been here, John. Absolutely. And when it comes to Perry Manassian and the kind of team that he's constructing, I think we're really seeing what it's like to be under the thumb of Artie Marino, especially yeah. with the rumors that Artie or the, the, the baseball people are encouraging Artie to spend like as if he's not going to yeah. this off season. And that's a, another conversation for another time. But Mike, look, I understand being under, I think all of this conversation today about Perry Manassian, we have to understand that he's under the thumb of Artie Marino in right. all of the decision-making that he's done. But the second thing is that there's been three managers in three years yeah. with Perry Manassian. And the problem doesn't really begin with Perry. It begins with the fact that, you know, Sosha was done with his contract. They, they bring in Brad Osmus because that's who Epler wanted. They fire him. Joe Madden is selected because that's who Artie wanted. Then Billy's gone. Then Perry comes in and he doesn't get along with Joe. And then Phil Nevin's a stopgap. And this is the first time that Perry Manassian has been able to hire a manager that he's excited to work with. And I think can work with. Yeah. Problem is, is that it didn't work with the last two. And I think you're under an obligation to somebody like Joe Madden, who was, who was here before you and in here before Perry Manassian got here. I understand it's not your guy, Mike, the, the inconsistency from the front office down to the field has been so obvious yeah. throughout Perry Manassian's tenure, especially with the disruptive nature of, Hey, you should use this bullpen guy or that arm or whatever, yeah. or only yeah. let this guy go this many pitches. So he hasn't brought a lot of consistency, only a lot of change. And I have to say that if this isn't the year where we start to see some cohesiveness on the field, because Perry has the manager that he got to choose and he got to hire, if it doesn't work out and, and I understand they're under a lot of pressure because they, they don't necessarily have the tools to be a championship team at the moment where it stands. Now, obviously we're excited about the young guys getting an opportunity and playing. And so you, you, you have to think about the fact that, if this isn't a successful year, it's. I think it's going to have less to do with Ron Washington and more to do with the fact that they didn't give him the tools to properly go somewhere in 2024. Yeah. But again, if there's if there's not a modicum of success here, then that's going to be on Perry Manassian. Right. And speaking of getting the tools for success, I think that's the third reason why many would say that Perry shouldn't stay because of the trade deadline mess last year. The Angels mm. made multiple moves that... <laughs> And it didn't work out, right? And and yeah. then they lost a lot of top prospects and we lost a listener. Kai Bush's mom doesn't listen anymore. And so we're really <laughs> frustrated with that. So the, the truth is, is that they lost these top prospects, which in the grand scheme, they probably weren't worth as much as everybody would say that they're worth because the Angels minor leagues are not fantastic. Well, but you, they still are young sure, guys. You'd sure like to have those prospects now if they were planning on Absolutely. making some trades. And, Absolutely. And, and to go back to, like, we, we have to realize that it seems like the 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 narrative here is that Artie put the kibosh on trading Otani. Yeah. And of course they had to go into 
try and win something. We were excited when they went in because they were three games out of a wild card spot. Right. right. I think they were behind the Yankees and the Yankees didn't get a wild card spot. So nope. there was certainly opportunity to take advantage of, of the moment. It's just, everybody was awful after that trade deadline. Yeah. Didn't help that the injuries occurred. And then, you know, a month later they're putting all the guy on all yeah. the guys on waivers to try to get that salary down and get under the luxury tax, which shows you where the priority is. Right. For the team in the front office. Bad look. And it's hard because it, it, it as much as as much uh, uh, autonomy as we hoped Perry Manassian had, I think last year kind of proved that no matter who's under Artie Marino, he's still going to make the you know the uh, declarations at the end of the yeah. day, the executive orders, I should say, yeah. at the end of the day, right? Yeah, and I think the fourth reason for Perry considering like he hasn't done really well and him leaving would be that he couldn't get a deal done. With Shohei Otani, he couldn't extend mm. him, he couldn't keep him, he couldn't even build around him. And I get mm -hmm. that caveat is always that Artie's around and 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 Artie said no, and I and I get all of that stuff. But truth is, is that if you're going to do really well in your role, then I think you also need to do well in convincing your owner that this is what you need to do for your yes, team. Because 100%. he he convinced Perry Minas or he convinced Artie Moreno, Perry Manassian did not to sign Trey Turner. He convinced him to go and let's get some other people and get some other mm -hmm. pieces. And so he does have some influence, at least that we're aware of, of, of Artie Moreno and what he can do. And so I think in those moments, like you have to push back hardcore and say, Hey, we need to do this. And I think that that conversation should have happened two years ago, not two months ago or two weeks ago. Right. Right. Well, and, and after 2021, there was that ESPN article that was out there and it gets posted all the time of Otani talking about how he would be interested yeah. An extension and yeah. there wasn't any extension talks now you know that's that's one side of the story but it just if if the angels didn't do anything in that moment just goes to show that they didn't believe and they didn't buy in to otani's 2021 yeah. which is the stupidest mistake that you could make if yeah. you watch that season and went yeah but can he do it again like like come yeah. on he was invincible that season and then he goes and has an incredible 2023 another mvp season so it was either they didn't buy into what he was doing in 2021 or they didn't want to extend a recent AL MVP winner because at the end of the day, they they let that moment pass them by. And, and here we are two years later missing out on everything that Otani can bring to the team. But at the same time, like you mentioned, with Artie's influence, Perry, he, he's got to be able to push back and he's got to be able to have some some leeway in the situation, especially when it's your job to do so. Hey, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. I know that you come here for sports to escape some of the re crazy realities of life, but let's just talk for a moment about some of those crazy realities. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin, and it's happening right in the middle of the cold and flu season. I heard something about like COVID and uh, RSV and, and and flu kind of mixing together. It seems like everybody's gotten sick over the oh, Christmas great. holiday, right? Like that's, that's a lot of fun, but here's the good news. It doesn't have to be a worry for you when you get yourself a Jace case. A Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics that treat a long list of bacterial illnesses. It includes UTIs, respiratory and sinus infections, skin infections, and more. You can vis visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter and it will be reviewed by one of their board certified physicians and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the cost that's good news because we need that in this economy right now right and <clears throat> it's never been more important to get prepared today so visit jacemedical.com and use our promo code locked on you'll get 20 dollars off your order you're welcome that's a gift from us that's jacemedical.com j-a-s-e medical.com All right, Mike, it's time to give our Locked On Everydayers our opinions. I know we shared reasons why Perry should stay, reasons why Perry shouldn't stay. I know that you've got some reasons here, so why don't you start us out with why you think Perry should stay or go? What do you say? I'm going to say I think Perry should stay at least one more year. Okay. And and the reason why... Beyond, beyond, beyond 2024. I think that they should extend him one more year. Yes. Okay, okay. And I the reason for that is because that's the length of Ron Washington's deal. Mm. And I think I think Perry needs to have his guy there for a year, and I think he needs to have at least two years having his guy that he picked in charge. Mm. Because there's a lot that goes into that relationship with your manager. And as you've mentioned before, 
there's been a lot of tension and there's been a lot of like, Hey, from the, from the front office, you should do this and you should do that. And right. I'm not going to use that. And I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to do what I want. And Aaron loops coming in, in the third inning. If I want to, <laughs> right? so whether that was good or bad, it still got really, really messy. Aaron loop in the third inning. <laughs> right. And so I think he should stay this year. And I think that he should be extended for at least one more year just to honor the length of Ron Washington's deal. Second thing is I think he should stay because he has drafted. Well, he's over son, really great drafts that have really impacted this team. And I believe that that's how the angels get back to their winning ways. Mm. And then the third thing is I, I really am convinced that it takes about four years to make significant change in whatever mm. you're leading. And he has inherited a mess and he's really had to clean up that mess for the last three years. This is not to say that, you know, his bad record uh, shouldn't be taken into account. It's not to say mm. that some of the dumb decisions that have been made should not be taken into account. Even just recently with them, putting uh, uh, the guy from the Guardians that they signed, please oh, Zach please yeah. yeah, he's on the major league roster. And then they they sent the lefty, um, Adam Kolarsik, down to the, you know, Kaleric, him yeah. to Kaleric, that's it. Kaleric yeah. down to the minor leagues. Like, even that decision was like, come on, guys. Like, you well, <laughs> you need some yeah. forethought there, you know? Uh, to me, that's because Kaleric has that option. And so sure. it frees up the, that space for... sure. Police act to be available on the 40 man roster. So it just feels, it just I didn't feels, have a problem with that. It just I actually thought that was, I thought that was kind of like, Hey, not a bad, okay. Not a bad move, so. It just feels messy to me. It feels like there wasn't really a plan. It wasn't really a thought, but uh, we, we'll disagree on that one. But the, the truth is, is that I think it takes about four years to really clean up the mess that you've inherited. And I think that he deserves to have this year and perhaps even the next year, maybe extended into that fifth year for him to be able to really put his fingerprints on this team and to evaluate him clearly. So I would say he should stay for those reasons. What about you? I, I would be okay with him staying through Ron Washington's tenure, because if you don't, then there it goes back to your lack of cohesiveness again, because you're going to have another GM come yeah, in yeah. and you're going to have him work with Ron Washington and, and maybe they don't work together. I don't know, but but here's the thing, Mike, and, and these are my thoughts because I I do think that it makes sense for him to stay through Washington's tenure. But here's what I'm frustrated with. We have seen Perry Manassian come in, and we were really hopeful about this. Changes to the minor leagues, changes to the way that their, their coaching systems work down there, changes to the way that we develop these guys in terms of how they're coached. It seemed like Perry was bringing in a lot of interesting names like guys from driveline guys who because everybody goes to driveline during the yeah. off season police yeah. act went there and, and developed a, a kevin gossman splitter is what they're calling it right and to say all that is perry seemed to have a very analytical focus in terms of like, hey let's get the angels into the 21st century here but now you kind of zoom out and you look at what happened toward the end of the season and over the off season and kind of getting back to that old school feel kind of thing. It uh, all kind of happened with, uh, with Percy coming in and, and saying once less iPads and more feel and more eyes. And, yeah. and that was just a passing comment, but it, they took it seriously. And so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's disappointing to see the angels backtrack on a lot of what Perry was bringing to the table. doesn't mean that everything worked out. Obviously I think that there are still pitching problems up and down the system. And we're starting to see maybe guys like Chase Silseth, uh, be the be the result of of the good that's been in the system. Yeah, but when you when you have the chance to come in with a plan and you put it in place, and suddenly we're backtracking in a lot of ways, that worries me. It tells me that perhaps you didn't have as much buy in from upstairs as as you might have had when you got there. But then again, it's already Marino, and it's hard to convince him to do anything in yeah. the 21st century, right? Like, like to get this team up to speed to at least be like somewhat comparable to a team that has, you know, uh, a weight room for spring training and <laughs> not making their guys drive through Chick-fil-A instead of having actual breakfast in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Like CJ Wilson was talking about. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, yes, I would like to see Perry get one more year so that he can work with Washington, I do think that he's done a lot in terms of developing and getting guys to the majors that the angels have desperately needed. I am hopeful that with their, their picks that they make this upcoming draft, that they are a little more wise in terms of, Hey, get somebody who's like a starter that you don't need right away. Yeah. Give him four to five years to develop into an ACE. And then that goes back to, well, do you trust the minor league development 
to make that guy an ace. And, and so uh, for me, I think that Perry has done a lot of good. I would like to see him stay through Ron Washington's tenure. Mike, if I'm being honest here, there are a lot of indications that I think a lot of things are going to change with the angels and this mm. front office. If, if we're going down this pattern that we've been going down so far in the off season, that says a lot to me. And I, again, I think that's a conversation for another time, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see an entire regime change, especially with ownership mm. within the next year, because all indications to me, it seems like, all right, everything's kind of coming to an end and we're not doing a lot of spending. I'm really interested to see what happens with the Halos this year. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Remember, every day is Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today, and they are there for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, like John and I, plus our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On Angels and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Again, whether you're watching or listening, come on over to today's show on YouTube. Get in our comments. The best way to catch us is in our comment section on YouTube. Don't forget, again, whether you're watching or listening, the uh, voting for best baseball podcast is available to you. So go to the episode description, tap that link. And uh, we would love to have your vote for best baseball podcast. Mike, we'll be back on Wednesday. What do we have on deck for Wednesday's show? Well, you mentioned it with the draft in June. The Angels have four picks in the top 100, John. And wow. I think it could potentially be a narrative change for the minors, but also mm. for the majors. So we're going to tell you about those picks and why they could be a game-changing pick, all four of them. For the Angels in 2024. We're going to talk about that on Wednesday on Locked On Angels. Looking forward to that conversation. Hopefully they have all four. Because if they sign somebody with a qualifying offer like Snell yeah. or Bellinger, that one of those is going to go away. So, right. hey, we'll see what happens. And maybe they'll roll into they next year. They do get year. a pick, though, from Otani in the second round. So ah, in, in between. Yes. So they do get an extra pick, which is nice. There we go. I love it. All right. So we'll talk about that on Wednesday. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, friends. And we'll see you back here on Wednesday. I think I did way too much talking today. My voice is like, I feel like I've been smoking six packs a day today. <laughs> give it, give it a and rest. I don't smoke. <laughs>